Okay, and I'm closing the like little video thing other than just me, so I can see what you see. Um, okay, so uh, one of the reasons why you couldn't get your um, pencil as dark as what Siro worked with is because Siro is working with Conte Crayon, uh, which is similar to pastel. Okay. Um, we're going to work with our fine charcoal. So go ahead and uh, you should have two boxes, a medium and a soft. Go ahead and grab a stick of the medium. It's, I think that's the variations that you have. And so like what I like to do, if this is my little thing here, a lot of on a delay. Why is there so much delay? Um, I like to um, actually break my little um, tool. So um, did you say medium? Yeah, let's work with the medium, everybody. Okay, that's better. I don't know, there was like a weird delay. Okay, so you're gonna take your medium and what I like to do is kind of actually break it. Okay, now when you do that, don't, don't get these little pieces all like kind of mixed together because um, you probably yet won't have the ability to kind of like, I can feel a stick of fine charcoal and determine its density. And um, that's because I've had a lot of fine charcoal, you know, um, like between my fingers. So keep them separate when you break them. Um, and so what I want you to do is just on your pastel paper, um, just in like the corner, go ahead and let's do what we did with the pencil. Let's make a dark value. And then let's just pull out of that dark value. You can actually see the graphite bowling, right? So again, it's really dirty and messy. It's, I really love it. Some people don't, but I do. And let's just pull out to a light value. <sighs> just like that. Now I have a few different things from you right now. So some of your results will be a bit different. I'm using a charcoal paper. It's got a tone to it. Yours is white. And then um, my chamois is a different brand than yours. So you're gonna get some different results, okay? Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this little bit. So open up your chamois if you haven't done that yet, okay? And then you can use your chamois just tap it into the charcoal and see what happens when you do that. I'm kind of surprised at how much this charcoal paper is holding the fine charcoal. I was playing a second ago. Let's see if you can't make your vine charcoal lighter just by tapping it. Okay. So then go ahead and take your hand and work the charcoal into the surface of the paper and see what that looks like. I'll use that to blend it into the white of the paper and then go back and feed the dark. And then blend into what you've already just done. And then use your finger. And this time, don't, don't smash the charcoal into the paper, just gently, just gently touch it.
so the charcoal is very malleable. Okay, and so one of the things that I want you to do is take the side of the charcoal and just use the side of the charcoal to create like a little square. And then with your little chamois, kind of blend that in. Now what should be happening is some of the charcoal should be coming off onto your chamois, but it should be, you know, some of the charcoal should be staying in the surface of the paper. And so like, this is how we would tone the paper. So then go ahead and draw boundary box around that little square. Like so. If your square is teeny, 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 then make it a bit bigger. Okay. Excuse me. Uh, go ahead and um, where did I put my eraser? Grab your eraser and let's use, uh, you can use any of them that you like because I want you to experiment. I'm going to use this little, this little eraser here but you have the white plastic eraser, you have the kneaded eraser, and I think you have a gummy eraser. I want you to experiment with all of them. And what we're gonna do is we're just going to remove some of the charcoal and make a little bit of a light spot. Do this like right in the center of the page, kind of like this. Probably not a huge difference, and that's okay. A lot of drawing is about subtlety. So you can see I've got like a little bit of a light spot. Now let's go ahead and put dark on the other side of that light spot you created. And let's make it curved. Like that. So we've just made whatever this edge is here step forward by putting the dark behind it. So now let's take that shape and let's feel a little bit of a sphere. And let's kind of put a line in here for horizon line. Now in value-based drawing, there's kind of like a beginning where you're doing the gesture or the sketch like you saw in my video, where you need line, okay? But at the end of the drawing, we should have no line at all. It should be completely gone. So take your tool. So basically, you know, let's look at creating a sphere. So go ahead and like, let's, start to solidify the background. Don't work yet on the sphere, just work on the background. Something like that. We made this part here lighter, so that tells us we're gonna have a shadow coming through here. So 
go ahead and put that shadow in there. And then I want you to think this pressure, like this pressure here, whatever pressure you did, notice it's not black. And I want you to bring it up here where you left the charcoal. So now we have a dimensional form without doing a lot of work. We've got um, our highlight, which is the part we erased away. We've got our light area, which is the place where we put the light charcoal originally. So the tone of the space, the tone of the paper. Okay. And we've got our shadow. So let's continue to feed the background. And then I don't want, I want you to kind of like find the edge, but I don't want you to draw a line. And now I'm going to travel my tool from here with this pressure onto the sphere. and travel it off the sphere and back onto the sphere. And I'm not traveling down here, I'm just traveling up here and then travel from there into the shadow. And then travel back up to the background. So, a word of the day is travel, <laughs> okay? In terms of traveling with art tools. You can take your chamois if you like and sort of touch blend. Don't lose all of the mark. You can kind of touch blend. And you can also use your eraser to subtract light. So we're no longer thinking about our eraser as a fixing tool we are now going to think about our eraser as a subtraction tool. We are now drawing with light. That's a nice little sphere that we just made. So now we can take, let's take some of your um, compressed charcoal. So open up your compressed charcoal package. And then we can use that to just touch up the places where we want really dark. Don't put it everywhere. Remember, it's just like the hottest pepper that you could use in cooking. If you put it everywhere, it's gonna throw out the balance of the whole drawing. So just in the places where you want that really dark, dark. And then blend it into the vine charcoal. <laughs> so at the end of the drawing, where you want all of our original sketch line to be gone, the only thing we want are edge to edge values. Now it doesn't mean your, your drawing has to always go darker. There might be some places where you need to make it lighter and then you can use the chamois to remove 
charcoal. Another great tool for removing charcoal is the kneaded eraser, which is like the gummy eraser in your kit. It's gray. You can literally actually take that and pull it to a point and draw with it. You can tap the surface with it. And when it gets full of charcoal and you want to clean it, just pull it apart and it will clean itself. It's really amazing. I don't, it's like one of the tools that I use that I don't want to know how it works. I don't want to know how it cleans itself. I want the magic. <laughs> I feel like I'd be greatly disappointed if I found out that like, you know, it's just friction, for instance. Like, I want the magic of thinking that the eraser is cleaning itself. It's, it just feels magical to me. Okay, so we did that with the medium charcoal. So now take out your soft charcoal and take out your soft charcoal and break off a little piece of that. And we're doing like the same type of thing. And what I'm asking you to do is really pay attention to the way that things feel different. I'm going to make my little square, make my little boundary box. So when I'm doing this, I'm toning the paper. Okay, this time we're not going to start with the eraser. We're going to start with the, the soft charcoal tool. There's my boundary box. So, Let's go ahead and establish your horizon line. Establish a corner, pull up higher than the horizon line. Let's make our vanishing point off the box out there. And we'll make this one here. And then just connect your edges. And then just make this edge here. here. Now I'm purposely doing some of the same shapes we did yes uh, on Tuesday. Now take your eraser and then let's erase the charcoal in this plane. So, let's make this side here dark. Like so. So now we have a dimensional drawing. We have three tones. We have white, black, and gray. So if this side is going to be dark, 
then let's go ahead and create like a little bit of our shadow over here. We don't want it to be black though. Let's just make it like a darker gray. Now this plane is sticking out because it's lighter. This plane is sticking out because it's darker. And then we have a fourth tone in here, which is this lighter gray tone. And then we have this overall gray. So let's go ahead back here. Let's make back here darker. But as it gets closer to the dark side of the, the rectangle, let's make it lighter. So we're only making here along that edge of light darker. Now, where you have the bottom here, go ahead and create that shadow line. But again, we're trying to think about not having any line that wouldn't be based on a value. So then we're gonna kind of think about like that shadow line having just a hair of blending as it comes out. Okay, for this last little thing, we're just gonna play around. We're gonna actually just feel how the charcoal can help us to create mood. And so this is kind of linked to your Ciro. So I'm gonna create my boundary box. Oops, sorry about that. That's not very good. There we go. You can go ahead and take the side of your charcoal and just kind of like, and you can use medium or soft, it's up to you. I'm just gonna fill in the space with a tone. Okay, I'm just gonna use my hand to kind of smooth that out. And then I'm gonna watch, watch my hand, I'm just, kind of like control scribbling. And yours will look a little bit different because your hand is not my hand. I'm just gonna come through here and control scribble. Some marks. And you can see that I'm keeping my tool on the page. That's classic Soro, I think. We don't have any videos of him drawing or anything like that. But as someone that makes drawings and studies drawing and teaches drawing, I think that's what he was doing. Just like this little bit of the scribble. Now I'm gonna take my compressed charcoal. And I'm gonna come through and I'm gonna do some darker scribbling. You can see it's lifting off the vine charcoal a little bit, but I can then hopefully, no, it's not gonna let me. So I'm just gonna to have to replace some of my vine charcoal with my compressed charcoal. and then try to blend it in. I 
I'm just doing this controlled scribble. And I'm just gonna come through here. And while I'm drawing y'all, I've got my eyes squinted. And I'm gonna go back to my fine charcoal and see if I can't like kind of blend some of that edges there like this. Just because the vine, the compressed took off some of the outside edges, I'm just going to kind of go back over. Now I'm going to take my tool, my vine charcoal. I'm going to go horizontal down here. So this is, I'm, I'm being super Bobby Ross here, right? Super Bob Ross, like really try to just like make some marks that make you happy. I'm gonna take my chamois, kind of like pull it to like a little bit of a point and just drag it across the, the page back and forth to lift up some value. And now between these dark marks, I'm gonna lift off some value. And then I'm gonna take my eraser and I'm going to pull my eraser through some of these spaces. And pull some light through there. So now I'm starting to be able to lift light out between the dark lines. And, you know, I'm not expecting yours to look like you're this. I'm not expecting you to feel like it's successful. I just want to show you that you can be playful. So then if there's light coming here, then this dark shape there could throw a shadow and I could pull light this way. And so this is subtractive drawing in the sense that like I'm now using my tool to remove darkness to create light. And gosh darn, if I just don't think this is just the cat's pajamas. So yeah, we're being like, this is like super like, just like art teacher, <laughs> you know, like let's talk about mood. But you can see with just a few marks, we're able to create a pretty convincing landscape. Or 
Well, I think it's convincing. You might not think it's convincing. I think it is. And I can use my chamois, perhaps, here. And just touch. And as I'm touching, what I'm doing is I'm kind of like smudging the texture so that I can have areas that have the texture of the paper and areas that does not have the texture of the paper. And that's like the back and forthness of drawing that I find so exciting. Y'all, this is Gestalt. This is what Gestalt is really kind of giving us a chance to consider, which is how do similar marks in a proximity that are opened and closed, so using closure to create a figure and a ground, how do those things give us the illusion of a group. So how do marks together give us the illusion of a group of trees? And what is the necessary proximity of those marks to create the illusion of the group? If you want to learn more about Gestalt, then I suggest that you take my design class. Maybe in the front here, there's a, an old fence post that's falling over. a little bit of old wire. So you can go as Bob Ross as you want, right? Like you can now incorporate, you know, a tree that you remember from your childhood or something of that nature. It's fun, drawing is fun. So download the PowerPoint, have a look at the, the, this one, which is just talks about the egg in terms of its, the approach to drawing it. So these are the different parts of the egg in terms of value that you can um, recreate because they're visible. So you start by toning your paper to a middle gray value then you're going to do your gesture and you're going to start to seek the form okay the way we did in class today but also the way i do in the video and then basically all you're doing throughout the whole process is adding and subtracting and adding and subtracting and adding and subtracting so you add in value you pull out highlights with your eraser okay so then you add in more value, you pull out more highlights. And so it's just this constant back and forth, back and forth. So one of the things I want you to notice that I'm doing in the drawing here and also in the drawing of the video is I'm working the whole drawing all at once. The background is just as important as the surface, which is just as important as the shadow, which is just as important as the egg. In no way should you be doing contour drawing. This is not about moments. This is about holistic approach. So the way that you want to finally decide where the final edges are, you will define those contours with value. So like here you can see that what appears to look like a little bit of a line, but it's not a line as a value. And that value is blending into the egg. So the one thing I say a lot to students when they show me their drawings usually is I'll say to them, well, if you have a line, you're telling me that there's darkness 
And that darkness either needs to be on the egg, behind the egg, or in the background. So you cannot have any lines left at the end, okay? So that is your goal. So um, I think, so that's the final version of the drawing there that I made for, as the example. And now these are some of the student works. Okay, so every drawing that's in this PowerPoint is good, but I have some issues with different parts, <laughs> okay? So like these are really great eggs, especially the cracked eggs. So you're gonna do two drawings of the whole egg and then you're gonna break the egg and you're gonna draw the shell. Throw away the egg. Do not try to draw the egg. No drawing of the yolk and the white. I don't want it. I only want the shell. Do not think, oh, I need to make this more challenging. If you do this assignment the right way, you will not have another more challenging assignment this quarter than this assignment. Even drawing the face. Drawing the face is easy because you've got all these points of reference. Drawing an egg is hard because there's nothing there. Okay. And also with the right lighting, the egg becomes translucent. So don't make this harder. Don't think this is going to be a boring drawing. It's only boring if you make it boring. This is going to be a drawing that is really hard for you. Okay, so what you want to do is um, you really want to focus on the shell. You're doing two whole eggs. You can turn them any direction you want and then two cracked eggs. You can either draw just one half of the cracked eggs or both of them, <laughs> okay? I really like these drawings. I remember the student very well. She was a wonderful young artist. Um, I like these drawings a lot, but I don't like these marks. Like this like eraser mark back there, I don't like it. But the eggs I like, okay? Look at this, it is totally rad. Not only do we have that sort of like weird skin from inside the egg, but we have the shadow from that skin. How do you make that happen? Put down a tone, lift out the light of the skin, add darkness where you see shadow underneath. Cracks in the eggshell, y'all, they're gonna be there. They're not lines. They're dimensional form. You see the crack because you see the darkness inside the crack. But if you looked real close, you would notice that the crack is dimensional. So you cannot describe a crack just with a line. It must have highlights, midtone, shadows inside the crack. These ones I really liked because I like the way they use the shadow. You cannot control the subject, you're drawing eggs, but you can control how big they are, how much shadow, how you're using the horizon line. Your options here for composition are really reduced to three main components. The horizon line, if you use it or not, the egg, and then of course, most importantly, your lighting. Look how cool this lighting is. It's rad. You got a light source, boo! It's showing light here, boo! It's showing this shadow, Whew! That's rad, okay? The student, used fabric, you're not supposed to, but she did. <laughs> that irks me still to this day. So we don't really have a defined line back there, but her eggs are really soft and subtle. And I really like that. She was, the student did really soft drawings. These are drawing one. Now something else you're able to control here in terms of composition, which I should have mentioned when I did all my noises, was the size of the egg. 
You can pick how close the egg is or how far away based on the size. You're not expected to do a drawing of an egg that the egg is the same size as the egg you're drawing. These ones are nice. This one over here, I really like this one with all that reflected light in the shadow. But you're noticing all these examples, there is no line. I mean, there might be the indication of a shadow with the edge, but it's not a line like a contour line. These are really nice. As a teacher, I don't like students that draw this well. Just joking, I love them, right? But like, I'm jealous that they were drawing like this, like in drawing one. I'm human, I can get jealous. So some other examples. And of course, by the way, of course, just to clarify, I. I do like those students and I do like their drawings. I'm just jealous. Just being sassy, I'm a sassy girl. Okay, so this is the assignment. Okay, so execute four drawings of an egg that explore exterior and interior qualities through the employment of mass and value based drawings. So not line drawing. So you've already watched the video, you've already taken the quiz. You're gonna set up a white egg on white paper with a white background and light it with one light source. What works really great for this is like a flashlight, but don't forget like, if you can't see your paper because the room is so dark, then you won't be able to draw, okay? Um, so you want to have a really strong light source, but you don't need the room dark to the point where you can't see your paper but you want to, the more singular your light source, the easier the drawing will be, okay? So you're gonna do some uh, sketches, okay, on your mixed media paper. Um, I suggest highly that you actually set up your egg and work from the egg in real life. Nobody, I don't want anybody like setting up an egg and taking a photograph and working from the photograph. I want you to use a real egg, okay? It does tell you to do eight sketches and it's, they, they're going to end up being something like a quarter of the page, but I'm not super concerned. Okay. I just want eight sketches. And that's where you're going to be playing, play around with where, how big the egg should be, play around with where the horizon line should be, be playful, have fun. Then when you're ready, you're going to do your 12 by nine inch pastel paper, one drawing per page. If you remove it from the pad to use your drawing board, that's great. Just slide it back in though with that um, tracing paper vellum sheet to protect it. So this just tells you how to do what we've talked about in the video and what we did today. It says bring to class. You can't, okay? <laughs> bring it to class like Zoom class, okay? And now this is due next Tuesday, okay? You probably won't do a more important drawing um, in terms of like your development uh, this quarter. Okay. It's a really important drawing. Because from here we go to the figure and the landscape. So this, the way the class is set up, we call this like, you know, scope and sequence. What is the sequence of the techniques you're being introduced to? And what is the overall goal of the scope? So you were introduced to contour, we looked at line, we looked at edge, that taught us about dimensionality, we went to perspective, that taught us about space and proportion. Now we're in value, which is talking about volume and form. And then we're moving towards the figure. Okay. Questions? Okay.